Hey all you lovely people, Miss Sara here and I'm back with another speed build for you guys. First off I wanted to say sorry I didn't post a video in a few days. Normally I would have posted a video on Sunday but it was the Easter weekend so I was quite busy visiting my family and I also had a birthday of my nephew who turned 6. So yeah, it was a pretty busy, busy weekend and my husband was home from work as well so I didn't really have time to record voiceovers or let's plays or whatever because I don't feel comfortable recording when he's around so I had to wait until today and he's back at work now so I have all the time in the world to record some voiceovers and maybe in the afternoon I'll go record a let's play. So yeah, apologies for that, but hopefully this video will make it up to you guys. I did play a lot of Sims this past weekend, but I didn't record anything of that. It was just on my own game, the one that I don't record anything with. And I had a lot of fun. I played with Zoe, the hippie artistic sim that I created. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you'll probably would have seen that I've posted a lot of pictures on there because I do post pictures on Twitter whenever I play The Sims. And yeah, I did the plant sim challenge with Zoe and that was a lot of fun. It wasn't too much of a challenge but it was still kind of difficult because I couldn't really find all the plant sims that gives you the magic beans. Only when I stayed at my own house they would just walk by my house so then I could talk to them and ask for a magic beam but I never really spotted them in the public lots so yeah that was a bit of a challenge also because they have to be in an emotional state so you get the right beans and one of them I had to make angry and I really don't like upsetting other sims so that was <laughs> that was a challenge for me <laughs> But I managed to do it anyways and let me just tell you that Plant Sim and Zoe aren't exactly friends anymore. <laughs> anyways, I'll explain to you guys what I'm building here in case you guys are wondering what the hell I'm building. I wanted to create something different, something I didn't make before, but I also wanted to make a tiny house, sort of. I mean, nothing too big. So I went on Pinterest and when I opened Pinterest, the first picture that I saw was from a modern Japanese house. I didn't even look for anything yet and that picture was just on the front page. So I figured, hey, that might be a good idea. So let's research some more. So I typed in modern Japanese house or whatever and I just saw a lot of these tiny modern, really small houses. And yeah, that's how I got the inspiration to build this. So it's inspired on a modern Japanese house. And if you Google small Japanese houses, you'll find a lot of weird architecture stuff. They get really creative when they make these small houses. So some of them look really weird and funky, but I think it's really cool. I love tiny houses and I love seeing what they can do with that amount of space. And yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like room tours on YouTube. Uh, there are some YouTubers that live in Japan and live in a really tiny apartment. Like, I mean tiny, tiny apartment. And I've watched a lot of those videos because I really love tiny houses. And I really like to see how those people utilize all their space. So yeah, if you guys want to see that, then you should definitely search on YouTube for Japan room tour or small Japan apartment or whatever. As you can see, I'm messing around with the stairs here because I thought it would save space if I managed to stack them above each other, but it didn't really work out because I didn't have enough space. So yeah, I just put the stairs on the other side and made a little hallway between the stairs. I do have to say that for the inside, I didn't look up any references for this. I didn't Google like inside of a Japanese modern house or whatever. I just put in whatever furniture I thought looked okay. So I didn't really went with a Japanese style for the inside. I hope you guys don't mind. You can always download this house of the gallery and refurnish it yourself. Anyways, I hope you guys had a great Easter weekend. I'm really curious to know what you guys did on the weekend, if you guys have any special traditions that you do on Easter. Like, in my adult life I don't have any traditions that I do for Easter. 
Um, I remember when I was a kid, I used to be so excited for Easter because my parents would always, um, the night before Easter, they would always uh, hide a lot of chocolate eggs in our house, a lot of Easter eggs. So I was always very excited for that because once we woke up, we get to find all the eggs and we always had a lot of fun doing that. And the one thing that my parents always did they would always forget how much eggs they would have hidden inside the house. So let's just say that they would hit like 30 eggs. They would always forget that they hit 30 eggs. So once we would find like 25 of them, they would be tired of it already. And they would say, oh, you guys found all the eggs. Yay, let's be done with this now. And then like a few months later, we would always find more Easter eggs inside the house on places that we wouldn't even know or would be very obvious, like on top of a painting or in the curtains or whatever. And I always had so much fun doing that. And we used to have a dog as well. And the dog would always give up all the places because he would help us find all the Easter eggs. And then my mom and dad would be like, no, no, cut it out, go away. And then the dog would always lead us to the next Easter egg. And it was always so much fun. So I'm really curious if you guys have any stories like that on your Easter. Let me know in the comments below because I really would like to read them. As you guys can see, I separated the house in different levels. Because the house is so small, it was difficult to place the kitchen and dining on the same level as the living room so I figured I would place the kitchen and dining downstairs. I put the living room and the bathroom on the second level and then the top level is the bedroom. And right now I'm realizing I kept everything in a neutral color, either white or beige or sand color. I did add in a little bit of art in the living room to give a little pop of color. But right now I'm realizing that I kind of made the bedroom a little bit girly. I went with a pink accent color. So that's easily changed to blue if you want to put a guy in here. So yeah, I went with a bit of a girly vibe on the bedroom. But like I said, it's easily changed. I'm also finally getting a little bit better using the move objects on cheat. And then using the 9 and 0 key to elevate stuff. I've been practicing a lot with that, so as you guys saw, I used it in the kitchen to place stuff on top of the fridge and I did use it in the living room as well to place some stuff on the TV furniture. So yeah, I've been practicing with it and I'm getting slightly better. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's also my main goal to get better with using the move objects on cheat and then elevating stuff. It's also a lot of fun because you also can make your own furniture if you get really good at doing that. I don't know if you guys see um, the videos that Yuna Gina makes, but she made a video recently where she decorated a house that was a bit realistic house. I think it was a challenge to create a uh, house from a layout and she just really made all the, her own furniture inside that house that was so awesome and she really tries to blend in a lot of furniture with each other to just create something entirely new so yeah if you guys are interested in that i suggest you look up yuna gina she makes a lot of cool videos and i learn a lot from her videos so i probably mentioned her before because i'm really obsessed with her videos so yeah <laughs> Anyways, I see that we are already on the top level and can I just tell you guys how much I love that nightstand? I think it's called the cookbook nook or something. It came with the cool, cool kitchen stuff back. I can never remember all the names. But yeah, it's so cute. I love that it has all the little books on the shelves. And I really love using it as a nightstand if I feel like the sim living there is a reader. They can't actually use the books from that nightstand, but it looks really cool for decoration. Also, I really like that dresser from City Living. It really has a little bit of an IKEA vibe and I love that. The IKEA stuff bag from The Sims 2 was probably one of my favorite. So I really always hope that they will make another stuff bag like that, but I, they probably never will. <laughs> 
The part that I loved the most about it, about the IKEA stuff bag, was I would go shopping with my mom in IKEA and then I would be like, Oh look mom, my sims have that dresser too! Or, oh mom, look, my sims have those lightings too! And <laughs> that would just always be so funny to me. And now that I'm talking about this, I'm really starting to miss my sims too. <laughs> Oh well, I still have the game installed, so I can always go back into The Sims 2. Did you guys play The Sims 2? I love that game so much, I spent so many hours inside of it. <laughs> or do you guys still play The Sims 3? I always tend to drop the old game whenever the new one is around. I did play The Sims 3 and The Sims 4 together for a few months, but the controls in The Sims 4, I just thought they felt so much better and I really like the emotional state that the sims get so I actually know what my sims are feeling so I just went over to the sims 4 completely. I still start up the old games every once in a while just for the nostalgia but yeah I definitely am not playing them like I used to. Also the one thing that really bothered me inside the sims 3 I could never find the chinchilla. <laughs> I know it's a stupid thing, but I was always out hunting for the small animals and I always wanted a chinchilla because I have chinchillas myself and I just thought that would be so cool and so cute, but I could never find the chinchilla. Even now, till this day, I've never had a chinchilla in The Sims 3. So sad about it. <laughs> And I also love that in The Sims Medieval they make the chinchillas this evil entity inside the woods. I still have to do the chinchilla quest, I think there is a quest for that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> Anyways, I see that we are already on the screenshots. If you like this house then leave this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And I really hope you guys like this house as much as I do and if you have some Asian sims then you can consider putting them in this house or just any type of sim that loves a small house. Anyways, I'm gonna end it here. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet then why not hit up that subscribe button. I try to make new videos every two to three days. I hope you guys will have an awesome day and I'll talk to you guys in another video. Bye!